Hello and welcome back to the channel. As you can probably tell by the background, I'm not in my van. That is because the last few days, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know the last few days I've gone away for the weekend. I've come down to Wales, um, St. David's, the Pembrokeshire coast, to see my daughter and grandson because they spend the summer with their mom down in St. David's. So I've come down here as a bit of a, um, surprise visit so my daughter was here my other daughter was here and they didn't know i was coming down surprise visit pretty ad hoc and part of the reason for that is it's sort of work related is i've got a tent box as again some of you on instagram will have seen i've got a tent box that fits on top of my van i don't know if the sun's catching that but yeah it literally just bolts on top of the van and honestly I'm not joking within four or five minutes that is fully set up like that from being completely flat on the van. So, A, the trip was to try that out. B, obviously, to come and see my kids. Probably should have been the other way around. A, to come and see my kids. B, to give the tent box a bit of a try out. So I'm camping here for tonight and this is the view that I've got. Just thought I'd share this with you as a bit of an intro to the video. It's not a bad sort of view, is it? So yeah, because I'm up quite high, when I get up in the morning, I'm overlooking that. Which isn't bad at all. Anyway, you're not here to find out what I've been up to over the weekend and sunning myself in sunny Wales. However, I have been in the last hour, as you can see, got my power pack on my phone because I do all my edit on my phone. I've been editing up the video that you're about to watch. So it is for a customer of mine, my favorite customer, David. He's been on the channel a couple of times. He rung me up in the week and said, Mark, I've got a problem with my immersion eater, as you'll see. Um, so nine times out of 10, if you go to a job where there's a problem with the immersion eater, you change the immersion eater and start. They're usually in an airing cupboard, plenty of access, as always, this one isn't. Turns into a bit of a headache actually, but I'll let you watch the video and let you see how we got around this pain in the arse immersion here. So for some strange reason, sometimes you'll do a job for someone and then they've got another job and another job and another job all coming at the same time. Well, Today, I'm back at one of my favorite customers. I mentioned in a previous video, David, he had the problem with the Aqualesia shower. So he called me out, come to look at the Aqualesia shower. That was sorted out by Aqualesia. And while I was there, he said to me, can you replace a kitchen tap, which I've done for him. I didn't bother filming it because I think I'd done a few kitchen taps the last few weeks. So I didn't do that, but that was a week and a half ago, just in there. And he's rung me this morning. And funnily enough, there he is, look. Oh, there he is. Funny enough, he's having his boiler swapped over at the minute. He's got an old oil system. Um, a mate, I've put him onto a mate of mine who's doing the oil conversion, uh, the boiler conversion for him. But because they've taken the old boiler out for the last few weeks, he's been running on an immersion heater. So he's rung me this morning, um, and he's basically said, "Mark, my immersion heater stopped working. Can you come and sort it out?" So. I've just been a picture immersion eater up and also I haven't done an immersion eater for I can't remember the last immersion eater I swapped so I even had to check the van to make sure I still had my immersion eater spanner so we'll pop in we'll have a look it's feast or famine David isn't it I'll come to look at your shower then swapped your tap now, yeah now the immersion eater's gone it's probably sounds lower, isn't it? Yeah, it well, is. Well, very nice to see you. And you, mate, and you. Good, good. How's things? Yeah, good to see you. Good, good. good look, it's got the steps ready. I've got the steps ready. Let's have a look oh. then. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's right on the top as well. It is, I know. But look, look at that. What? I'm doing the light on up there. Oh, got all the mod cons, mate. <laughs> all the mod cons. Where is it? Right, right down the outside. Side. It's not made for a man your side. No, it's not. Jesus, where is it, mate? Right over the back side. Right. There's no cap on it. Oh, right. I can't even see it. Oh, yeah. I don't know how we're going to get that out. Oh, no. Because it has to cut this. This could be interesting. 
It's never easy, look. He knew it, that's why he's rung me and he's gone, just pop out and do it. He never said it was. <laughs> Shit, um, how are we gonna do that then? I think that pipe's gonna come out, isn't it? The top pipe. That's your main hot water. Is that, no, it's the feed. Yeah. What's above there? What's above here? Mm, that I'm just thinking because the immersion is probably. I know. Well, we had to bend it to get the last one in. But as you can see, there's a cut in the ceiling. Yeah, that's yeah. where it's gone in, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we can't. We can't remove that. <sighs> right. Oh dear. I'll be back with you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> this is very difficult. Yeah. So after a bit of head scratching. We've got a few, basically the, the stat is at the back. I don't know if I can't see up, but let me see if you can see that. I assume we can. So you can see where the immersion heater is there. So we've got to take the hot water draw off pipe off anyway to get that out. Now, what David reckons is the electrician or whenever this was put in, I, have you replaced the stat in it before then? So if we got that up and cut an access in that. Yeah, well that, that all comes off, it's all screwed on. Really. Oh, that whole lot comes off? The whole lot is, is flat board screw, you know, whatever you call it. Yeah. Boards, and it's just screwed on there. So, so in theory that could come out? It could do. It's, I know it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. So that is directly above where the cylinder is. And what we're thinking of possibly as you can see, is that immersion heater coming out from there and going up because you're going to lift it. So yeah, so I don't even think if we went through the top, it's too much of a distance to reach down. So I think that way is out because it's too high. We can't change it in position, we can't change it in situ. So it is either to cut an access here, which obviously is a lot, which we don't really want to do. It is just boarding and yeah, it's just plasterboard and we could get to it easy enough. We could cut that out, cut an access there and do it that way. Yeah. That would be the easiest way, I think, because that would give us direct access straight away there. Yeah. And then the other option is to take the tank out, but I just think the way the tank's cut in, even if we yeah, disconnected yeah, yeah. it, yeah. It's, it, 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 it's not gonna pivot to come no, out. No. I know that's a pain, David, to cut that yeah. out, but if we cut it in a section, then it could be well, can, fixed from that side. I could, and, put, a, I could put a water tip plastic Cover. Yeah, or, or just, yeah, when it's, to be fair, it'd probably be best to keep it accessible. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. So yeah, because of where that is, it's just a bit of a, a nightmare to get into. And I think just cutting that panel out there is the best way. Because we've still got to try and get it out after that anyway. We still got to try and get the, the immersion heater out and the new one in. But yeah, so that's it. Sometimes a, a phone call of, can you come and change the immersion heater and start? But it is what it is. Right, we'll sort of finalize a plan. I think we're gonna have to go through that way. But just by cutting out there, He's going to save a hell of a lot of disturbance, stress, etc, etc. So, the verdict's in. We're going to cut this panel out here. To be fair, it's, David will get something to cover up, or I can even get my chippy to make a, like a unit or a, a door that's going to go across there with some architecture, so it's not going to look out of place. But, as I advised him anyway, it's it's the only access we're going to have even if we did a load of work and took the cylinder out which we'd struggle to do anyway if ever there's an issue with it you've got no access up there anyway so we're going to cut this out now get access to the immersion heater um, and then work from there so we've trimmed around that 
we've got that trimmed out and then if I just give it a little tickle from behind it's coming out so we'll get this get this out now so we've got that out we've got our little access panel and as if by magic we've got the immersion eater to be fair the wiring don't look too great but we'll have a bit of an investigation. So what we have to do anyway, we're going to have to drain the, drain the hot water out because we've got to take this pipe off because it's just in the way of where the immersion heater is. So we'll get it drained, disconnect that. And then what I always do with immersion heaters is get the spanner on it and crack it to start with. Also always advise that sometimes when you undo these immersion heaters, they can crack the cylinder. So what I always do is just tell the customer that just to cover your ass. Nine times out of 10, it doesn't happen, but if you was to try and undo that and it cracked the cylinder, obviously, you've then got to replace the cylinder. But what we'll do, we'll crack it with it hot, with it full, and then drain it out, get the Aquavac on it or a hose, and then we can whip that immersion heater out. We've got the electrics disconnected from the immersion now, and we've uh, isolated the tank upstairs, so we're just draining the hot water out the top of the tank. What I'm then gonna do is disconnect this, Take this pipe out of the way, and then, because even now I can't get the spanner on it, so that's pipe's got to come out of the way. Then we'll get the spanner on it while the cylinder's still full of water, and see if we can crack, get it on there, crack that immersion off the top. And then we've just got the issue of getting it up to get it out, so we may have to just cut a bit of this ceiling out to send it up. Hopefully that's not in the way either. But yeah. Bit of a pain. Right, that's the hot water drained down now. So what we do, undo this here, undo that there, take this pipe out and get some access to that. So that's the nuts undone off it. But as you see, this, these are two fixed points. So we're gonna struggle a little bit to get this out. So I'm gonna try and, there's a little bit, oh yeah, there's a little bit of movement in that, hopefully enough to get that pipe out. So I'm not gonna be able to get the camera in anywhere because there's nowhere to put it but let's try and get that out get the get a towel ready because there may be a bit of water that comes out there once that's out we can then get that out after a bit of to and fro in we've got that bit of pipe out now so we just soak this water up here and get onto that let's get the box spanner on here and as this is still full we'll uh see if we can get a tiny bit of movement on it if not we'll have to heat it up but hopefully we can get enough on it to crack it and begin to unwind it out the cylinder so we're struggling to get this immersion heater to just crack to go so lucky enough david being a farmer has always got the odd bit of a uh, pipe kicking around so we've got a bit of an extension bar going on it. Hopefully, that will get it to go. Right, I think we've got it. Yes, that bar made all the difference. So what we'll do now, we'll turn it out. There's gonna be a little bit of water in it because obviously at the moment the water's at this level and the immersion's at that level. So I've got the Aquavac down there. So we'll just loosen this enough. Oh, you can hear it. I bet it's bent right down. You know, when you turn it inside, you can hear it yeah. scraping on here. Yeah. So what happens sometimes is that element, where are we? So that's the new, that's the new one that's gonna go in. Now what can happen with time, because obviously it's in water and the heat's up, cools down, these elements can bend. Now as I'm turning this here, I can hear the edge of that element around the bottom of the tank. Don't worry, this tape isn't holding a leak in. It's just holding. <laughs> this insulation but as I turn it let me see if I can pick it up as I turn it if you can hear it that is the outside edge of that scraping against there so be interesting when it comes out we've got this out just have the aquavac on it just sucking the first little bit out the top of this cylinder it just stops the water constantly coming out the side so what we're going to do is take this up and this side through that gap, look at it, it's going to reach. It's not too 
feeling bad actually. Don't think yeah, it's not too bad. Right. Get this out. Yeah. Yeah, let me take this outside and I'll explain to you exactly what has happened with it because these are the electrodes sit inside it and it's split right down the middle and it's tripping out the stack so so we've got this out so obviously inside here is where your stack sits that's just um sits internally in there and then what you've got it actually on the element you've got a split here split here you can see it all coming away from itself there and it's split right down the middle there so yeah at least that one's come out fairly straightforward and we'll get the other one pasted up and put back in and look at this then cheers coffee on tap good, good. is that you is that you on the side david that playing the golf <laughs> no of course oh, it is oh, yes his own personalized mug so we're coming to make up this immersion eater and stack now. So what I do, these come with the washer there. I always put a load of paste in there, then the washer on. You can, you know, at the end of the day, I'd rather put too much paste on than not enough. So just put plenty of paste on the outside. And then what I'm also gonna do, I always put PTFE tape around there just so it locks on the thread. Because as I said, there's no, no harm in putting too much on rather than too little. So we do that. Grab some PTFE and bang it on there. Right, so we've got the new one to go in. Let's pop that light on so you can see what's going on. So if we feed it up there, pop it down, we'll bring our insulation down and then to start on there. Right, because this new immersion is obviously in the line of fire from where the fitting off the top of the cylinder was to where that T is, I just kicked this across a little bit and made in another bit of pipe. We've got to trim it down, but you just bend it round the top of that immersion heater, hopefully, and into that T. I think I've got it. So let's and have a look so interesting little breakthrough doing this cylinder so this is the fitting from the top of the cylinder and this is the old pipe that we're going to have to obviously change around that's why i've bent that one to go in but obviously the old pipe would sit in that not a problem so that was in the top of the cylinder i've bent the new bit and it won't go in so that is an old imperial fitting whereas obviously that one it will go right into point there whereas now nothing won't even slide into that so got to go off and grab a new tank connector or a new cylinder elbow to go on the top right so I've been and picked up a new connector for the top of this cylinder so let's make this in and I'm gonna have it just hopefully where's my bit of pipe we're gonna trim it down get this into position trim it down and I think that first bit of pipe bent up is going to fit a treat. There we go, that's set. 
is just set around that emulsion like that. treat. So we can get to that. If ever that's got to come out again or anything like that, or to tighten it up or, or whatnot. We've made that in there. I've just got to tighten these up. I'll finish doing them shortly. Get that tightened up and then we can get the water back on and get this tested and then when it's all we know it's all watertight and we can connect the cable into the top and get the immersion heater up and running it's been a bit of a faff so that's the tank turned on upstairs and we're filling back up with water now as you can probably hear let's go and pull some hot through the tank There we go. So we now we've got our water. Let's just make sure those connections are all nice and tight. All watertight. Yeah. We're all good. There we go, that's the tank filled. Immersion heater connected up. I've just tested it. We've turned it on, advanced it on that little timer. So we'll just give it 15 minutes or so just to make sure there's just to make sure there's some warmth coming through and then we can finish off here and what I could do is just put that into position and just uh, so it looks a little bit neat until we get it sorted out. Yeah.